talk to all the city of Forest Park uh, council work session, January 11, 2021. Just for everybody's benefit, so that we all are on the same page. Um, I've had a couple of requests, uh, like requests, I've been told by a couple of people. The championship football game starts at eight o'clock, so no matter what else happens, <laughs> we have to be finished by then, folk. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, first item on the agenda is Clean Ohio grant application. Uh, that would be Councilwoman Moore and Mr. Anderson. All right. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a resolution supporting the submission of the Clean Ohio Green Space Conservation Grant application for purchasing Oberter property which sits behind the Civic Center uh, Plaza and next to the ramp from Hamilton County, I mean, from Hamilton to eastbound I-275. Uh, we are proposing to um, apply for a grant for 100% of the purchase price of the property. And this will allow uh, us to, um, we may have to pay some closing uh, fees um, along the way. So, um, um, we urge um, adoption when it comes to um, council um, during the regular council meeting. Okay, any questions, Mr. Anderson, you got anything to add? Uh, yes, um, you may recall we, um, this is gonna be the second time we're um, uh, submitting for this grant. Um, and uh, we have a grant deadline of January 22nd. Um, which is the reason for requesting the special uh, council meeting following this work session for adoption. Um, currently, we're having the property appraised uh, by a professional appraiser. That's in process. So we don't know uh, what the exact amount of the grant will be um, until we get that information in. However, when we did this in 2018, the, um, the appraisal then was $740,000. Um, of that, on that price, um, what happens is that the owner um, will, in their contract with us, reduce that price by 25%. Um, and then we will apply for an amount of the remaining 75%. That 25% counts as a donation on their part. Um, and it also counts as matching funds uh, for the grant. So that's um, just important to know. I expect that the price would be um, similar uh, to uh, the price that we had in 2018. It could be higher or lower, but um, shouldn't be too much different. Um, we are um, suggesting to acquire this um, for green space preservation, essentially, um, to keep it wooded. Um, it does have um, a, a number of um, native hardwood species uh, on, on it. Um, it has a, a stream that runs through the northern half of the property. Um, and it is also um, at the outer limit of the community as, as part of um, you know, what's known around here as a green belt. Um, and uh, it would uh, contribute to that uh, as well. Um, and so um, it's a way for the city to um, get this land, um, preserve it um, in its forested condition um, at um, really very, very little cost to the city um, at, at all. So, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for <coughs> Councilwoman Dr. Moore, Mr. Anderson? Yes, I, I have a question. Uh, are there any uh, comments or any uh, or any proposals of the, the of the land being looked at, being purchased by some other uh, persons uh, or, or companies or right? Um, the um, the land has been owned for um, I think about twenty five years. Uh, by uh, the Oberer Development Company uh, out of Dayton. And um, 
they have um, made attempts to develop the property uh, in the past, um, none of which have panned out. Um, the, the major um, stumbling block with development of the property is the access to it. Um, 275, when it, went, when it came through and, and the interchange was built at Hamilton, cut off most of the access for this property. It does not have any direct access to Hamilton Avenue. It's essentially landlocked. Um, what the property owner does have is an easement from the um, neighboring property, the, the shopping center, civic center, um, shopping center, to bring a, a drive <laughs> through their property um, that would go essentially right where the car wash is being built right now. Um, and that between them and, and Frisch's that driveway to access that driveway, which is not even a full access to Hamilton. So um, they can't bring a road into their property because of um, they don't have the direct access to Hamilton and, and that also limits bringing in utilities to the property. So it's just a real difficult um, situation all around for the property owner. Um, uh, but that being said, it is uh, 21 acres of, of commercially zoned land. Um, and uh, that, you know, it is, um, something that um, will factor into the value uh, opinion that we'll receive from the appraiser. Anybody else? Okay. Well, we've got about uh, for the next item uh, La, La Rosa's redevelopment in San Diego, Councilman Irby and Paul Brown. Yeah. Um, the owner of the La Rosa's on uh, Northland Boulevard is proposing to. Um, purchase and renovate a vacant building on Hamilton Avenue and to move a franchise from a neighboring community into there as a drive through and carry out uh, La Rosa's. Um, he would invest a million dollars uh, for the purchase and renovation, bring in uh, 25 full-time and 20 part-time, or I might get that backwards, um, people to work uh, would be about a million dollar payroll. Um, and it, we are asking for a $15,000 um, redevelopment grant uh, because this does fit into our targeted uh, areas in the redevelopment program. So Paul, if you got anything else, please add it. Uh, just one correction and it's my fault because I actually misread Ed's application. The, the jobs number is correct. It's 25 full-time and 20 part-time. The payroll is 528,000. I actually misread it because I double counted the jobs because Ed had them listed as retained jobs and then uh, a retained payroll and then, create, and then new to Forest Park. So I thought it was twice that, but it, it's, it's just the 528 number. This still makes it in with our parameters of the program. You might remember whenever we do these redevelopment grants for projects such as this, we try to recoup our money in the first two to three years of the project. Based on that payroll number, we'll see a return of about $7,800, $7,900 a year. Two so years. within two years, we'll see our, our return on the investment. So. Uh, we're still anticipating that this is a worthwhile project for us. I think anyone who's familiar with that property, this is the old, what used to be the car title loan place over on Hamilton. So having Ed come in, that gives us Frisch's, La Rosa's, McDonald's on the corner, uh, you know, plus uh, the auto parts place. That gives us a pretty nice mix around the bend. Uh, and actually, it's like we talk, this shopping center actually has for, for its location and its, its age, because it will have a decent mix within the center. Uh, if we can just now work with the owner to try to make some physical improvements to its appearance, um, I think we'll have something that can have some sustainability on the corner. So this is a good project for us. Uh, obviously, working with the miners family is important. This is the same ownership group that has the Northland McDonald's and has had it for decades. 
So the ability to kind of bring them into the picture, um, you know, that's another reason for us to, to complete this project. So staff definitely recommends approval. This is a good project for us. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very, very interested in trying to make this happen. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe before it was a check cash in place many, many, many years ago, it was a Burger King, I believe. Uh, it, it might have been, and I think it was actually an Arby's for a while, if I remember right. The Arby's uh, was next door. The, the okay. Arby's was next door, yeah. This this was a Burger King 100 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're... We're in a, I think this gives us a good, you know, good opportunity on the corner. Um, I think this delivery carry uh, type scenario, we're going to see more of that. Uh, yeah. I think particularly, uh, this was even pre-pandemic. That was kind of a trend that was growing in the restaurant industry. You might see one location that would have a dine-in facility and then satellite operations that would have this delivery carry component. Um, the pandemic kind of accelerated that trend. I think we're going to see more of this uh, in the future. Any questions from anybody? Questions or comments? <clears throat> uh, I, I too think it's a good project and I, I would just add again, I, I think Paul is absolutely right that <clears throat> a number of businesses are opting to go to uh, carry out, call in, pick up, because economically it makes more sense. And from a, especially from a profit standpoint, um, it just makes more sense. I, I think people have started to see that because of the pandemic. And a lot of people have, you know, even if you go out, for those of you who do go out to eat or whatever, uh, even, you know, you, you're not seeing nearly as many people. And if you talk to people, people are not necessarily not going out because of just the pandemic alone, but, but because it's far more convenient for them to just call in an order and go pick it up. You, you know, you don't have to worry about getting dressed and all of that other stuff. You just drive by and pick it up with, with you know, in your pajamas if you want. So uh, again, any other questions on any, either of these two items? Hearing now, we got about a minute ago. Uh, Miss Sally, are you yes. Sally are you there? I saw you on TV last night. I was not supposed to be on TV last night, <laughs> but you were. <laughs> I don't know. I don't he know tricked that me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you looked good. You did a good job. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> didn't recognize but I didn't you. Didn't want first. to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Sally. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who may have missed Sally's debut on TV, uh, she was talking about the, uh, the stimulus checks. Uh, mm -hmm. She got interviewed about that. So she did a great job. As oh, we thanks. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> Don't trust reporters. <laughs> Anybody who trusts the media, there's something wrong with you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, according to my clock, it's seven o'clock. Uh, Dana, are we ready to move to the next thing? We are, but only if you trust this media. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Okay, uh, <clears throat> at this point, I would adjourn the, uh, we we'll call, uh, we will adjourn the work session and we will call to order a special council meeting January 11, 2020. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Brown. Here. Clark. Clark. Here. Herbie. Here. Holt. Here. Johnson. Here. Moore. Here. Sylvester. Here. Let the record show that we are all present and accounted for. So then we will move right to item number two, new business. And there is a motion before the first new business item. Uh, Council Mayor Irby. I would move to suspend the rules requiring the reading in full and read by title only. Resolution numbers 01-2021 and 02-2021. Second. And moving and seconded that we 
suspend the rules requiring the reading in four on two separate occasions and read by title only resolutions 01 2021 and 02 2021. Is there any discussion? Just that they're posted as required. There is no discussion. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll on the motion to suspend? Brown? Yes. Clark? Clark? Yes. Kirby? Yes. Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. The motion to suspend the rules passed 7 0. First item on the new business is item A, resolution number 01 2021. Would the clerk please read that resolution by title only? Resolution number 01 2021. A resolution supporting the submission of a clean Ohio grant application for the acquisition of 200 of 231.12 acres of undeveloped land for open space preservation. Is there a motion, Councilwoman Moore? <clears throat> Could I ask Thank a you. question? Is that correct? 231.12? Oh. It should be 21. That's 21. what I thought I oh, heard. 20, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, then the, the correction <laughs> is 21 instead of 2. 31 okay 21.12 okay. acres that's in the uh, that's in the resolution as well. that's in the resolution is it in the body of the resolution too yes uh mr mr wycroft i think uh, we can call it a typo without having to go back and do the whole yeah. thing that is we, will, we will declare that that's a typo and the typo will be correct okay. your motion thank you 21.12 in the one that i got in the title? Uh, I think. I oh, and think the title is wrong. Yeah. But yeah the yeah. title is wrong. Yeah, the body yeah. is right. The title, yeah. The body is, right. the body is correct. Yeah. The, the ruling will be that there is a typo someplace or more than one place, and wherever that typo is, <laughs> the correct reading would be 21.12 acres. So, Councilwoman Dr. Moore, if you would make your motion, please. Thank you. I move to adopt resolution um, 01 2021. Second. Okay. Moved and second that we adopt resolution 01 2021. Is there any discussion, Councilwoman Moore? Um, yes, just that it was discussed during our work session and staff recommends uh, approval. Yes. Of uh, this resolution for submission of the Clean Ohio Green Space Conservation Grant application uh, for the purpose of the Obiter property. I urge adoption. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then <clears throat> we uh, would the clerk please call the roll on the resolution. Clark? Yes. Kirby? Yes. Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Resolution 01-2021 passes 7-0. The next item on the agenda is item B, resolution number 02-2021. Would the clerk please read that resolution by title only? Resolution number 02-2021, a resolution consenting to the execution of a redevelopment incentive agreement between La Rosa's and the city of Forest Park, Ohio. Is there a motion, Councilman Irby? I move adoption of resolution number 02-2021. Second. It's been moved and second that we adopt resolution 02-2021. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, um, the owner of the La Rosa's on Northland is proposing to purchase at a cost, purchase and renovate at a cost of a million dollars, um, a, a vacant property on Hamilton Avenue, and to move a uh, La Rosa's franchise from a neighboring community into that uh, location. Uh, the staff is proposing that we offer them a 15,000 
redevelopment grant, which we would um, see the recoupment of that amount of money in the course of two years, and I would urge adoption of this resolution. Further discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk then call the roll on resolution 02-2021? Herbie? Yes. Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Resolution 02-2021 passes 7-0. The next item on the agenda is item C, a motion. Councilwoman Moore. Yes, a motion to convene an executive session to discuss the purpose, the purchase of real estate. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, go into executive session to for discussion uh, regarding the purchase of real estate. Uh, is there any discussion on that? There is none. Then would the clerk please call the roll on the motion for executive session? Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Herbie? Yes. Motion to convene an executive session passes 7 0. Uh, at this time, we will go into executive session for this discussion. We will take no official action during that discussion. When that is done, we will return and the motion will be made to adjourn the executive session and reconvene into the regular council meeting. Okay, at this point, I need a motion, Councilwoman Moore, to adjourn the executive session and reconvene into the regular meeting. Hi, I motion to um, adjourn our executive session and return to our uh, regular meeting. Second. 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 Move and second that we adjourn the executive session and reconvene in our regular meeting. All those in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of voting aye. 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 Opposed? There's none opposed. So we're now back into the regular meeting. And uh, the only one announcement that I have to make, and Sally, wherever you are, you'll correct me, I'm sure. Um, next week, Monday is a holiday. So our council meeting then oh, will yeah. be on Tuesday, the 18th at 7. Is that right, Sally? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Sally will, as usual, get out to us whatever we need. <laughs> and Dana will send us uh, the ID, the code and the ID uh, for the virtual meeting. And we'll probably be using the same one, but that you get all that information. So unless there's any further business to come before the body. Diana had her hand I just, up. Had a, I just had a question. Do we know if there's going to be anything on the agenda? Well, next week is, would be a regular council meeting and not a work session. We do right. not cancel council meetings. Uh, there's no, no, uh, action items on the agenda, we still meet. I understand that, but I'm just wondering if there is anything, will we have a short work session before? Uh, that has not yet been determined, Don will let us know. But as right. of now, plan, plan on, unless you hear differently, plan on being seven at seven o'clock, the regular meeting on Tuesday, the 19th. Yeah. Okay, anything else before the body? Any other business? Gives you time to run to your kitchen and get your <laughs> snacks and stuff and get to the TV. Uh, Thank this you guys. meeting is adjourned. See everybody. Stay Thank safe, you. people. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs> All right.